stress levels. It's a generally highly personal made for time and for you for some reason. It's Miss Taylor's second grade classroom. What did this place mean to you, Explorer? What happened here? Why is such an innocuous place so important? You've taken in the scenery of this nostalgic room quite enough. You rise to your feet and prepare for a good old-fashioned explore, an activity that you've grown extremely accustomed to throughout your time in the back rooms. Perhaps because you're walking around in an externalization of your own memory, you feel as though you're innately aware of how to find your way around inside here. Or, at the very least, you hope. As you head towards the hallway near the back of the classroom, you see photos of previous classes affixed to the walls. You take a step closer and look at them. All the little children lined up with the teacher for the photo. There's something wrong with their faces. All of them except Miss Taylor. Their features are entirely my gone. Like a That's face, what I left up. But they're configured incorrectly. Yeah, I don't bore him fucking up, though. Eyes, and noses seem to scattered here. randomly across the children's faces. My destiny is Your here, best yeah. guess is that it's because memory is fallible. You can't remember That's what these final. children look like. So your mind's filled hall, and you're struck by a somewhat eerie feeling. More so than other areas in the back rooms. You feel like you shouldn't be here. It's like you're an intruder. Your mind is flooded with memories of parent-teacher evenings, where you were left to wander around the school's hallways at night, the lights mostly off, feeling like you'd broken into a place where the universe was slightly altered. But here, you're in a different universe entirely, Explorer, and you know something awful is waiting for you. At the end of the hallway, you find the school library. You know it before you even see it, because when you open the door, you're assailed with the strong smell of the librarian's coffee and the scent of dusty old paper. You spent so many hours in that library over the years, disappearing into the fantastical worlds of books. Your escape, your respite from how hard and cruel reality could often be. It gives you a warm glow inside to be in there among all those childhood favorites again. Until you remember the second floor. Just the thought of it sends a shudder down your spine. Even as an adult, it's remarkable how things like this can still hold power over you all these years later. All the kids back then spread rumors about the second floor of the library being haunted. Really, it was a glorified storage area, connected to the library below an old creaking set of metal stairs. There was a prop up there, a strange, malformed human body, made out of paper mache years before you were even born. Probably made for some school play or Halloween party, but it waits up there in the dark. The kids back then would dare each other to walk to the top of the stairs, while the rest just stood there and watched. The brave ones made it up halfway, but none of them ever made it up all the way. You remember trying it yourself. You felt so courageous to begin with, but the second you saw that dark shape, the body, waiting for you up there, your resolve melted. You ran back down those stairs faster than you thought was physically possible, while all the other kids just watched and laughed at you. It was good practice, Explorer. Look at how well all that running has done you now. You know better than anyone that sometimes running is all you can do. The memories get to be too much, and you decide to leave the library. The bad vibes of the second floor erase whatever goodwill the memory of books long since read might have given you. You get that nagging feeling you sometimes get in the back rooms, where it feels as though your thoughts aren't your own, and that some alien force is insinuating concepts into your brain. It's a scary feeling, to feel as though the boundaries between you and everything but you are beginning to blur. It's dread, pure and simple. The dread of disappearing, of fading away. That's when the whispers start. As you walk down the long school halls, trying to remember the way out, cruel whispers begin to invade your mind. They don't say anything you haven't thought before, but they do it with such venomous intensity that you find it startling. 
It reminds you of your horrific hallucinations on level six. They start slow and quiet at first, so you just keep walking. But soon enough, the mysterious whispers in your ears are too loud to ignore. Remember when your mother left you behind in the supermarket and didn't come back for you for hours? Remember when you flunked that test and your father didn't let you eat for two days as a punishment? Remember the time the bullies found you alone in that park and beat you until you couldn't even get up and walk away? Remember when they rejected you? Remember all the times you were hungry, alone, and afraid? Remember seeing the man from the dark? Their words are hot and suffocating, reminding you of some of the worst times in your life before, feeling like hands tightening around your throat. Before the hyperventilating can start, you're lucky enough to see a fire exit. You'll do anything for poisonous whispers. Stop. You define your greatness. Start in January at Tate Queensland. Apply now. Poisonous whispers stop. It feels like salvation when you push the door and spill out onto the playground. The soles of your shoes squeaking against the blacktop like so many years ago. The I whispers have stopped. For my now, mom and dad when I was that's young. a relief. You take a deep breath in and exhale. And my boys. I served a couple of years in the pen. That's why I hate Earth and I don't want to go back. Plus my boring ass job. You know? Shit, man. Who would have thought that it'd take going to the back rooms to finally make you adopt some healthy coping mechanisms, knowing some horrific entity could kill you at any moment? Still, now isn't the time to get all existential. Instead, you look up at the clear blue sky and the shining sun. You could easily imagine you're in the old world. What a joy it would be to start again, to make better choices, to avoid all the mines. Now you know where they're all planted. But as a Greek playwright once said, one thing is denied even to God, to alter the past. Instead, you decide to explore this long buried memory some more, walking around the playground, scoping out the old basketball court and the faded hopscotch. <laughs> Did you have fun here once? It's hard to remember. It's as though something else happened here. Some black hole that draws all other memories and feelings towards it. What happened here? That's when you hear the voice, and you feel yourself getting cold. As though an icy breeze has cut across the playground, despite the sun above. Hey kid, why don't you come over here? I want to show you something. Your head turns slowly as though on a crank. Seeing the grassy embankment that slopes down to an old chain link fence. The only thing separating the playground from the world outside. And that's where the dark figure stands. His blurry fingers gripping the metal of the fence. His breaths are deep and ragged. You walk to the edge of the grass, not in control of your actions. A little closer, he says. You won't be able to see from there. His voice sounds like a disease. It makes your skin feel dirty. You get the sense that you shouldn't come any closer. If you stay away from the fence, he can't hurt you. You just need to stay away from that fence. Closer, he repeats. Just a little closer. Are, are you an entity? You ask. The man on the other side of the fence just laughs. You still can't make him out. He's one with the shade of the trees beyond the playground. Don't you remember, James? He says. I've always been here. I'm part of this memory. Silly little kid. Didn't your mommy tell you not to talk to strangers? You stammer out. I'm not a kid anymore. The man lets out a long, hissing breath and says, You're always a kid here. You're not quite sure what to do. This man, is he telling the truth? Is he some entity? Or is he why you're even remembering this place? Something that happened here long ago. Something you repressed. Maybe you should ignore your instincts. Maybe you should get closer. Investigate. That's when you feel something tap against the back of your leg and turn around, startled. It is quite literally the last thing you could possibly expect. 
A pink plush dinosaur hmm. teetering on a pair of awkward legs, <laughs> smiling at you with shiny black plastic eyes. <coughs> it's one of the cutest things you've ever seen. It is, hmm. appropriately, mostly known as the plush dino. It shakes its head, as if to say, don't go down there. And without a single word, you know to believe it. It turns and walks away, and you decide to follow, knowing on some level that this must be some kind of steward on this level, an unambiguously positive force, a wonderful thing in the back rooms, for there are so few of those. It will lead you out of this strange and frightening episode of your distant past. You don't turn back, but you hear the poison voice of the man behind the fence calling after you. One more time. I'll see you again, James. And you'll see me, too. You just keep walking, following that adorable little plush dino. You know, so many have come to this level and never wanted to leave. They're bewitched by their nostalgia. They want to stay in their memories, in a foggy recollection of their past, forever. And not even the adorable plush dino can help them. We suppose sometimes, having a terrible childhood has its advantages. Want to stay tuned for the next exciting exploration into the back rooms <laughs> as we delve deeper and deeper into this liminal abyss. Be sure to subscribe to the back rooms explained and turn on notifications so you never. Welcome to the Sydney side of sports. Welcome back, explorer. Do you know where you are? The back rooms, obviously. But do you know where you are right now? It's dark and musty. The air is thick with dust and haze. There are boxes everywhere. They look so old. Barely held together by persistent strips of scotch tape. It takes a second for your eyes to adjust. You've just been subjected to the harsh glow of an early memory. The gloom here seems almost alien. At least it isn't like some of the earlier levels, where the darkness was so heavy and tangible that no light could possibly pierce it. In that regard, we suppose you're lucky. But soon enough, you'll find out that there is something far worse than darkness lingering in the air up here. The only open question is whether you'll find out before it's too late. Welcome to level 19. Be sure to breathe it in. You adjust relatively quickly to your surroundings. The smell of moldy old clothes and mothballs up here is hardly pleasant, but it's something you can live with. In fact, it brings up memories, but now is no time for nostalgia. You're an explorer after all. It's time to explore. You begin a careful journey across the old wooden floorboards beneath you, each one giving an audible creak under your weight. The roof above you is arched, buttressed into place by what looks like equally old wooden planks. Every so often, you see vintage furniture, old tables, chairs, and armoires stacked up along the walls. Some covered in tarps, and others left to gather dust, like everything else. Do you recognize this place? No, you tell yourself. That can't be right. It must just be the lingering after effects of the memory field of level 18. You just need to ignore it and keep on moving, don't you? It isn't that tight of fit, but still, there's a lingering sense of claustrophobia to this place. Like most places in the back rooms, there's no obvious exit, but here... That fact seems to really weigh on you. As you walk further and further down the attic, it begins to occur to you that it might never end. The forever attic, where every dusty old childhood thing is stored. Every gift never given. Every Christmas and Halloween decoration. A mansion of cobwebs, with six generations of spiders who've never known anything else. It sends a shudder down your spine. This is not a good place. Or is it? As if a switch has been flicked, suddenly, your disposition reverses. The growing sense of unease you were feeling before is now replaced with a warmth emanating from the middle of your chest, fanning out through you, spreading comfort and tranquility. You exhale, your breath causing the dust particles in the air to spin and twirl. Everything is right with the world. Somehow, you just know it. It's like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And we aren't just speaking metaphorically here. You can't help but notice something amongst the dusty old floorboards in front of you. A faint light. 
seemingly flowing out from between the floorboards. You feel yourself drawn to it, like a lizard seeking the warmth of the sun. Whatever that strange orange glow between the floorboards is, you need it. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel happy. And things that do that are few and far between down here. Aren't they, Explorer? You approach the floorboards with the orange glow and drop to your knees, pressing your fingers and face against the dusty old wood, not even stopping to consider that you might get splinters. Nothing could put a damper on the peace you're somehow receiving from this orange glow. It reminds you of simpler times, times before fear, before doubt, before the curse of self-awareness. The Halkion days when you still believed that everything might be okay, when all is said and done. That's when you remember exactly where you recognize this place from. So many years ago now, when you were just a little kid, you went to go spend a week with your grandparents while your parents were working through something. You remember your grandpa leading you up into the attic and showing you all of his old mementos from the war. A few rusty old medals in a tin cigar box, his dog tags, and even his service pistol. It blew your young mind to see such a connection to living history right in front of you. And once you were done, he'd lead you back downstairs, where your grandmother would have a tray of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies waiting for you. Just thinking about it makes a warm, contented smile spread over your face. But you're pulled from your blissful trance by a familiar sound. Your stomach growling. Suddenly it dawns on you that it's been a long, long time since you've eaten anything. And you'd better rectify that very soon if you don't want your journey in the back rooms to end before you hit level 20. That very soon if you don't want your journey in the back rooms to end before you hit level 20. That would just be humiliating, don't you think? You rise shakily to your feet, not exactly though. eager to leave behind the comforts that the orange glow under the floorboards provides. Sometimes comfort needs to take a back seat to the bare necessities. You continue trudging down the length of the infinite attic, the floorboards once again giving their telltale creak underneath your alien I footsteps. There are boxes everywhere. Surely one of these boxes contains something safe for you to eat. There's a nagging pain in your stomach that feels almost unbearable now. How is it possible that you didn't notice this feeling before? Was the orange glow that enrapturing? Hungry, hurting, and impatient. You grab the nearest box and tear it open. It's full of Christmas ornaments, porcelain baubles, and tiny ceramic Santas with fading paint, garlanded by garish vines of tinsel. Nothing of use here. But what if there's something tasty underneath? You grab a bauble, clearly not thinking straight, and stare into the box only to see more baubles underneath. In a state of mild delirium, you let the bauble in the box fall to the ground. The box itself clatters, but the bauble, strangely, does not. In fact, the second it makes contact with the floorboards, it doesn't shatter. It simply crumbles silently into dust. If you were in a better state of mind, that's the kind of thing you might notice. But right now, all you're focused on doing is getting yourself some grub. You search box after box, only to be disappointed again and again. Christmas decorations, Halloween decorations, dusty old knickknacks that even a thrift store would turn down. You feel like a child blowing their parents' money on endless mobile game loot boxes, only to get a dud every time. Except rather than just having to face up to a very angry mom and dad with a devastated credit card, you feel like your guts are tying themselves into knots. Food. Food. Go and food. Eh? It has to be yes. somewhere in here. Cool. You need it. And eventually. Poison. Hey guys, your boy here, boss. Me and this chick here are going to the beach and we're gonna fuck there. Oh good. Oh good. Be careful on your journey. Oh, I will. Come for me. What are we doing? Just one to that wall. We'll teleport you in a no crib. But. Just hold my hand, okay? Here. We. Go! Well, here we are at the beach. Nice. Oh, I know. Come sit down. Shut it. Press play. Food. 
Food. It has to be somewhere in here. You need it. And eventually, you do indeed get lucky. You find a dusty old chest. The kind of cliche the pirate might bury his treasure inside. This fucking, and you pop open the latches. You know? Within, there's a smorgasbord yeah, of delicious treats. Okay. Somehow perfectly preserved. There are crisp fruits and vegetables. Um, neatly onto cut that guy. And delicious freshly who baked we've cookies. Got mentor in. Just like the ones your grandma used to make. It seems too good to be true. And yeah, I am. And I saw you, you on YouTube, but I took down it. Yeah, that's me. All that matters okay. to you right now is finally cool. getting to eat. You reach in and grab handfuls of food, ready to stuff your I'm face to when so something my video horrifying on happens. The I don't know how it reach it from the confines of the box. It begins to decay rapidly. You know your in a matter of seconds, chemicals? it becomes a breeding ground yeah. for some unidentified They know a way out. That's why they go out, you know. Oh good, I don't care, you guys. If you know a way out, I don't care. I want to stay here. I hate Earth. And I do not want to go to Earth again. I want to stay here. Oh, it becomes Earth. a breeding ground for some unidentified furry mold. Seconds so, later, yeah, good for you, it's falling apart guy. in your hand but, and tripping to the yeah, floor in unpleasant really brown globs, okay. which soon fizzle away into nothingness. It's like watching weeks of rotting take place in less than a minute, just like the bauble that practically dematerialized before your eyes are Turns out, this place is even more inhospitable than you first imagined. How long are you? But I'm sorry to say, it's how long has you... your pain Fuck. is just getting started. How long have you, you been again. here? Gripping your aching stomach with both Just hands. for the day. As you turn and run back towards the floor, okay. so you knew the back room. Yeah. Surely oh, the good. glow will make it better. The glow has what you need. But by this point, the ambient anomalous effects of level 19 have already started creeping into your frazzled mind. As you try to fumble your way back towards the orange glow down the winding hall of the infinite attic, you feel a sudden and crushing sense of paranoia hit you like a meteorite. It's as though a thousand strange eyes have opened up on the walls around you, all just watching, judging. You can My feel who owns this beach like area? Something is out to get you, even though you know nothing is there. Fair enough. The there is multiple beach worlds. you ever really know nothing? But we is there. own this beach. Still, world. you know above all else that you need to get back to the sanctity of the orange glow. The only thing that seems like salvation amongst the horrors of level nineteen. And it's many cruel tricks. Mm. You know on some level that your fear and anxiety and paranoia will finally dissipate. If only you manage to get back there. But you quickly begin to realize that it isn't just your mind that's under attack here. It's your body. As you feel that agonizing spike of pain in your stomach. You can't move an inch. The pain doubles you over. It's some of the worst agony you've ever felt. Even in the deepest abysses of the back rooms. You feel a hot surge climbing up your throat and vomit before you can even think to hold it back. It reminds you of the first time you had stomach flu for a hellish week back in sixth grade. But times by ten, you look down at the puke on the floor. Does it look oddly red to you? The paranoia strikes again. Are your organs rotting away from the inside somehow? Just like the food in the bauble. Does this terrible place just cause everything to decay? The orange glow. You need it now more than ever. Perhaps it will heal you, fix you from the inside and out. Yes, that must be why it's here. To aid frightened explorers like you in your time of need, you need to push through the pain, no matter how terrible it feels. It'll all be worth it in the end. You continue hobbling across the creaky floorboards. The orange glow is in sight now. You feel shadows lurking all around you, reaching out with long, spindly fingers. Watching with invisible eyes, your eyelids are heavy. You suddenly feel the most tremendous sense of lightheadedness. Your forehead is glazed with a fine film of cold sweat. Are you blacking out? No, you can't. Not now. Who knows what would happen if you fell asleep here? You need to get back to the safety of the glow. It's the only way. But when you reach the floorboards with the orange glow rising up between them, to your horror, you don't feel the calm and serenity you felt earlier. Only that terrible dread and pain. Getting worse and worse. Naturally, panic starts to set in. This can't be possible. 
You needed this. What are you going to do now? You press your face up against the floorboards, but still, you feel nothing. You rise to your feet in a state of pure terror. Then it hits you, the idea that might save your life. What if all you need to do is get closer to that orange glow? And the only way you can do that is by breaking these damn floorboards. So that's exactly what you do. Summoning all of your remaining strength and animal fury, you stomp on the planks below again and again, feeling shockwaves of pain shooting up your leg each time. But you don't stop. You don't give up. You just keep stomping and stomping and stomping until you hear the wood start to crack and splinter. The floor gives way beneath you and you fall, but not into the orange glow. You just so happen to find a direct route to level 20. And all it took was a little attic vandalism. Who knew? You got mm -hmm. lucky this time, Explorer. Next time, it won't be so easy. Want to stay tuned for the next exciting exploration into the back rooms as we delve deeper and deeper into this liminal abyss. Be sure to subscribe to the back rooms explained and turn on notifications so you never miss another episode. TK Maxx, big brands, small prices, apps at TK Lootly. Free delivery. Sweet! Get your Christmas on with Amazon. The back rooms holds many secrets. That probably goes without saying at this point. But like a Russian doll... Oftentimes, mind. It's with this unsettling fact in mind that we once again join Trish in level four. Trish was an American soldier stationed in Afghanistan several years ago when she and her squad were accidentally no clipped into the back rooms. Sadly, since then, Trish is the only survivor as the back rooms enacted a horrible war of attrition against their health, sanity, and lives. Needless to say, Trish had already been through the ringer at this point, but in the grand scheme of things, the malicious forces of the back rooms were still only just getting started. She'd already faced several horrors in the enigmatic levels of the back rooms, from the sadistic and unstoppable Barnaby Bun of Barnaby Bun's Fun Emporium to the rotting ambulatory corpses lurking in the terrifying basement level. In some regards, Trish was relieved to be back on level four, which is generally rather safe, as long as you stay away from the windows. But Trish, still a soldier at heart, despite the loss of her guns, didn't want to settle for surviving. She wanted to get out and live. But after being repeatedly betrayed by doors, windows, elevators, and even breaking through the floorboards, she knew that she needed to try another method of escape. Lucky for Trish, her all-time favorite movie was Die Hard, so she decided to channel John McClane to get out of this jam. She'd find a way to get out through the air vents. After all, the ducks here looked big enough for even someone with her broad physique to comfortably crawl through. With her one remaining weapon, a combat knife she kept strapped to her belt, she could unlock a new potential escape route. Seeing as level four, the abandoned office, had an abundance of disused office furniture, it was easy for Trish to grab a nearby desk and push it beneath a vent on the upper half of a wall. Standing up on the desk, she was able to use her knife as a makeshift screwdriver, slowly removing the rivets holding the grate in place until she was able to remove it without causing any lasting damage. She'd learned that whenever possible, one should be quiet and discreet in here. She hoisted herself up into the vent, being careful not to move too abruptly, and began to crawl through. She tried not to enter a coughing fit as the air swam with ancient dust. These things were never as clean and stainless as they were in the movies, were they? Either way, she'd press on until she found the way into something different. And thankfully for her, well, depending on your point of view, she soon found what she was looking for. All it took was unscrewing another grate in the vent and dropping down below. Welcome to the latest enigmatic level, the insulation. Specifically, Area 1A. Yes, it's that kind of level. We suggest just rolling with it. As you may have noticed, 
This level is called the insulation because it's largely comprised of fluffy pink fiberglass attic insulation. The kind that's both good for the environment and will save you a lot of money on your monthly heating bill. Seriously, if your home or apartment isn't properly insulated, you're just throwing your money away. That aside, Trish momentarily entertained the idea that she might now be trapped in a strange world made of cotton candy. Because in the back rooms, who knows, really? But she soon came to the more logical conclusion of attic insulation and began to explore. Area 1A was relatively well lit, all things considered, making it at least as hospitable as level 4. And thanks to all that wonderful money-saving attic insulation, it was also comfortably warm and cozy, which is always a plus. The one downside so far was this strange new insulated Help. realm was relatively cramped. Forcing Trish to hug the walls on... Oh, they are. Die. Where is it? Thank you. You're welcome. Normally this world was peaceful. I don't know where that fucking entity come from. It probably not equipped into another world of TNT. Who the fuck knows? But hopefully there won't be more of them after that kind. I'm hoping yes. This level is supposed to be peaceful level. No entities, nothing to worry about except blue and beautiful sky. Multiple occasions just to squeeze through. Even so. Despite the endless fluffy insulation and ancient wooden scaffolding holding it all together, the air didn't feel as stale as it probably should for such an old, cramped place. Nothing ever seemed to make sense here. But hey, she was getting used to it. The more she walked, the more elaborate and expansive the twisting halls of wood and insulation seemed to become. She began to wonder where she actually was in relation to the wider world. Was this some kind of impossible alien megastructure? An underground base? Or had she really been transported into another alien dimension entirely? Where everything exists on a spectrum between utterly bizarre and incredibly hostile? Was any of this even real? Or just a delusion cooked up by a fractured mind? Trish concluded it probably wasn't all that constructive to dwell on these kinds of thoughts. Think modern yeah, medicine, nah, he's oh, away. You go Sir, you've been in a coma for the last Trust 27 me. years. Don't. She was best off assessing her immediate situation as well as she could, and making active situational decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. Otherwise, she was probably dooming herself to a stress-induced nervous breakdown, and slipping into a catatonic state in a new world full of dangerous monsters. Definitely wasn't a productive idea, but soon enough, this oddly chill section of the insulation would come to an end, and when it did... Trish would probably regret not enjoying it more while it lasted. With no clear point of delineation, Trish suddenly found herself wandering into an area that appeared darker, more industrial. The pink attic insulation still abounded, but it was punctuated by wires and pipes, running through the walls and out of the ground, lending to its overall more threatening vibe. While still a part of the overall insulation level, this particular zone is known as Area 1B. And if you're here, one thing can be sure, worse things are to come. But of course, Trish had no reason to know about that just yet, did she? She was still dead. She just kept walking as her eyes adjusted to the darkness of the new area. Sometimes, the pipes hissed and rattled. sparked. <coughs> it was really a miracle that this whole place had never caught fire before. But knowing her luck, Trish fully expected that today would oh, probably one. be the day. Was there anything of value down here? <laughs> Besides the immense value for money you'll be getting if you install good quality insulation in your pulp, poorly lit zone known as the crawl space, she immediately felt something change. It was as though the very vibrations of the air had altered in some subtle manner. This was no longer the strange comfort of the endless spools of attic insulation. This was the same feeling a person might get in a video game when they see the message. You cannot fast travel when enemies are nearby. But in the back rooms, it's simply a given that at any moment, real life enemies may be nearby. 
So Trish simply quietly slid her combat knife out of her belt and kept walking. Take a journey through game servers. Yeah, but, uh... Routers. Fuck off. She simply quietly slid her combat knife out of her belt and kept walking. Something that quickly struck Trish as she ventured deeper into the crawl space was the fact that the ceiling was slightly lower here and held up by a number of brick pillars stretching off into the darkened distance. She needed to crouch a little just to move comfortably here, which only made the feeling of being on edge even worse. She kept a white knuckle grip on her combat knife, which helped to alleviate the growing feelings of dread that seemed to be slowly consuming her. Maybe, she thought to herself, she should have just stayed in the office. There was a quiet rustling somewhere in the crawl space around her. Trish, ever alert, stifled a gasp and started looking around for the source of the noise. The standard line of thinking may be to calm yourself with platitudes like, maybe it's nothing. But Trish's training had taught her that plenty of people had died terrible, preventable deaths. With the thought, maybe it's nothing, still floating around their mind. It's always something. You just don't know what it is just yet. Trish kept moving extremely slowly, making sure that every footstep was as quiet as possible. She kept looking around, eyes scanning the darkness beyond the brickwork pillars. Did she just see something move in the dark? Or is her mind just playing tricks on her? When you're worried, it's hard to separate actual evidence you're receiving from the outside and the products of your own paranoid mind. Though when you suddenly hear the spindly limbs of a highly aggressive entity galloping up behind you, it's usually a pretty good indication that you really are in trouble right now. Our heroine turned around just in time to see a monster advancing on her. This is Entity 53, more colloquially known as the Crawl Space Creature. It's a long, spindly, vaguely humanoid entity that largely moves around on all fours, with shorter hind legs and long, mantis-like clawed forelimbs that allow it to move at shocking speeds. It also has a frightening swordfish-like head with sharp teeth and a long, pointed nose, allowing its highly attuned sense of smell to compensate for its poor eyesight. But right now, Trish was less concerned about the monster's physiology and more concerned about how not to be brutally slaughtered by it. Trish raised her arms as the beast bounded into her, protecting her body and taking two superficial wounds to her forearms. The creature's sudden weight knocked Trish to the floor as it kept snarling, biting, and slashing at her, while Trish kicked back aggressively with her boots. But the monster just kept coming. It was fast, frightening, and had seemingly boundless energy. And to make matters worse, the initial attack had knocked the combat knife from Trish's hands, leaving her a sitting duck in the face of the creature. She could turn this situation around, but she'd need to be very quick and extremely lucky. Without both, she was as good as dead. There was no doubt about that. As the crawl space creature lunged for her again, Trish put all her remaining energy into kicking at its head. Luckily, the sudden strike stunned the beast, exactly as planned. It wouldn't last for long, but it'd last just long enough for Trish to do exactly what she'd wanted to. She reached out, grabbed her combat knife, and stabbed it into the creature. It let out the most horrific screeching noise and began leaking thick green blood as it made a hasty and it keep the beast at bay. So she wasn't going to waste a second. She sprung to her feet and got out of there like her life depended on it. Because in this case, it absolutely did. She ran back to the hole she'd climbed in through and jumped back down into the darkness of Area 1B. From there, she ran back into the comforting light and warmth of Area 1A. But she didn't stop. She ran all the way back to the first vent, climbed back through, and Commando crawled back into Level 4, where she sat on the outdated carpet, puffing and puffing. It had been a living nightmare, but at least she was still living after all. Trish made one final mental note, before practically passing out right there and then. Stay the hell out of the vents. Want to continue your journey into all facets of the endless mystery that is the back rooms? Check out Level Zero, Entering the Back Rooms, for more on this seemingly infinite abyss from Back Rooms Explained. See you soon, friends. Hmm. Let's go over to... Okay.
yeah. The back rooms is an extremely mysterious place with countless levels, both enigmatic and otherwise, for you to explore. But perhaps one of the less discussed dimensions adjacent to the back rooms is, in fact, the front rooms. Where are the front rooms? How can you gain access? And what are your best chances to maximize survival once you're there? Don't worry, we can help you here. And the front rooms is likely an area that you're extremely familiar with. In fact, chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably there already. Pretty much everyone who no clipped into the back rooms did so from the front rooms. And almost anyone who spends long enough being chased through the back rooms by monstrous creatures and inhospitable environments will start to pine for a place in the front rooms again. But don't let that fool you, Wanderer. Danger abounds in the front rooms, and we'll tell you all about it. The most common way to enter the front rooms is via birth. You will enter the front rooms as a small and defenseless baby, incapable of speech, independent mobility, and complex thought, a state...